Good evening, welcome. We are continuing the Maimer of Basi Legani of 1983. This is the Rebbe's Maimer that he said in honor of Yutzvat, elaborating. Yutzvat, of course, is the yurt site of the previous Rebbe, the, Rebbe, the day that the Rebbe became Rebbe, and elaborating on the Maimer, a Hasidic discourse that the previous Rebbe issued for this day. And as we mentioned, every year, the Rebbe elaborates on another chapter of this discourse. The discourse has a total of 20 chapters. And we are up to chapter 13. And in the last lesson, we learned what the Rebbe briefly brought us up to date from all the previous 12 chapters. What the previous Rebbe is talking about this Mimer about is about basically the purpose of creation and the purpose of what is our mission? Why why do we come to this world? And he explains that when Hashem created the world, he had is the very essence of God is was in this in this physical world, the highest level of God. It was in a in a in a revealed form. And due to the sins that occurred throughout the generations, starting from the very first sin of Adam Arishen, it caused the Shechina to ascend and to go further and further away, the awareness of godliness to go further and further away from this world. And then the seven tzaddikim started the process of bringing it back down, bringing back the Shechina down to this world, starting from Avraham Avinu, our father Abraham, Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, everyone lowered the Shechina, brought it down closer to us, until Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu was the one that brought the Shechina down into this world, from the first heaven to the, to the earth. And the main focus of Moshe Rabbeinu's work was through the Mishkan to building the temple. And the Rebbe explains that the idea of building the temple is transforming the world. The temple was built from Atzi Shittim, wood that is called a Shittim. The word Shittim has the meaning of Shtut, which means foolishness. And the point is, we have to take the foolishness of the world and transform it into beams that hold a temple for Hashem. And the idea is that the same thing is something is what we need to do. It is our job to transform any foolishness of this world into and to make it a home for Hashem. Each and every person is a temple. V'shechanti betocham, Hashem says, I will dwell in them. And then the Rebbe said that this is a war that Hashem is fighting through us, transforming the enemy, the God, the, those who oppose godliness, into something positive. And the Rebbe says that because there is a challenge that triggers the, something very deep, that deep power, very strong power that we have deep inside us, that is the power of victory. And he says, just like when there is a king, when a king needs to fight a war, when there is an enemy and he wants, and he sees the things don't go very well, what he does, he does everything. It, it triggers within him the desire to win, the power of victory. And because of, in order to win the war, he will not spare any treasures, the deepest treasures that he never touched, that he got from his ancestors that nobody even saw. He takes those treasures and he spends them. He gives them to the officers to give it to the foot soldiers to be able to do whatever they need to do to fight, to win the war. And the same thing says the Rebbe. He explains this is the treasures that God reveals within us. 
in order for us to be able to fight all of the challenges, what are the treasures? It reveals godliness, the deeper, the soul, the neshama that we have, the ir shemaim, the fear of Hashem that we have, that is being revealed in each and every one of us to be able to fulfill our mission. And now we go on to what the Rebbe is going to explain. He's, he's up to the chapter 13 of the original Maimah from the previous Rebbe. And this chapter 13 focuses on the idea that is a statement in the Zoya that says that Oyer and Sof, the endless light of Hashem, is the Milo Adin Kates. It is up to the highest level without limit, and it goes down to the lowest levels without limits, to the lowest of the lowest. And the previous Rebbe in this chapter, he goes and elaborates about how low it goes. And it talks about the way Hashem created the world is a creation that comes about through contractions. That means that Hashem's infinite light is being contracted and being reduced. That the awareness of God is less and less and less after each contraction. To the point it's so low that it is possible to have existing a an entity that not only does not is not aware of godliness but even goes opposes godliness and yet everything comes from hashem from god and the rabbi is going to ask why the focus why do we focus so much about the details of all how low the godly light comes down. So let's see inside what the Rebbe says. We're, all, we're, all, we're holding an Oiz Gimel, chapter 3, in this moment. Says the Rebbe, This the, the Rebbe, the previous Rebbe, explains in chapter 13, which is corresponding to this year, which is the 13th year, the second time around. This was in 1983, Tafshin Mem Gimel. And of course, now we are the 13th year, the fourth time around in 2023. Tafshin Pei Gimel. So in that chapter, the Friedrich Arab explains the Indian, the Lemato Mato Adein Tachlis, he explains that the concept of what does it mean that Hashem's light goes down to the lowest without limit. That even the down to the lowest level goes without limits, just as it goes up without limits. So what does it mean it goes down without limits? So the Rebbe explains, So the Rebbe explains, in general, this is the chain-like descent of the light. The light of Hashem, the endless light of Hashem goes down lower and lower from level to level. One level leads to the next one, just like a chain, uh, a link, chain that the higher link the bottom of the higher link holds the top of the of the lower link. Each world is in a way like this. It is the godliness that goes down from one world to another world. And those worlds in general are termed the world of Berea, Yetzira, and Asiya. Ubifrat and more specifically, it goes even further that the, the, the descent of the godliness goes to the point that there's so much contraction, there's so much concealment and godliness until there is a possibility to being to a being that opposes God to be created and to be existing. Clip of a sitra acha. This is called the clipper, the shell, and the sitra acha the other side. 
the evil from the other side. Ve'ad leklipas paroi. Ultimately, in the lowest of the clippers is called the, the of the shells of the position is the position of Paroi, the position of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. What is so unique about the, the position of Pharaoh? It is explained in our portion, Torah portion, Pasha's bow, and the portions before. And he said, this is the, the river is mine, and I made myself. He considered himself a deity. In a sense, the Rebbe goes on to explain that this idea of the degradation, of spiritual degradation, is something that really happens to, to, to it can happen, God forbid, to every person. And that's what we need to be aware of. And Pharaoh, he's the one that says that they, and there is a river, the Nile River, which the Nile River gave sustenance to the entire world, to the entire Egypt. It irrigated the fields. And Pharaoh was blessed by Yaakov. The Torah says Yaakov Avinu gave a, a bracha to the Pharaoh. What was the bracha? What was the blessing? The blessing was <laughs> that when he comes, the Nile will rise in, in his honor. And he took it and he turned, the, turned it around. He knew that, the, that, the, that this comes from the blessing of Yaakov, comes from Hashem. But he says, no, this is mine. I'm a self-made man. This is, this is today. <laughs> in today's day and age, people think, oh, I do. I am a self-made man. I make myself. I know I'm... All the successes is are is attributed to my own doing, and this is a big clip, a big a position where when you don't realize that everything really is Hashem. That is why Hashem came and into Egypt to brought down the plagues to break the Egyptian opposition. Continues the Rebbe and adds, This is also the case. In the conduct of human beings. What is the beginning of the of, of the slippery slope? It begins not with a big sin, not with a major sin. The Yitzhahara does not come to a religious person and tells them, hey, I want you to go and eat pork and I want you to go to, to go bow down to idols. He knows that's nonsense. He's not going to listen to him. So what does he do? Tells him, just do a little bit. Just when you go in a straight line, you go just a little bit off the line. What happens? Maybe a tiny, tiny bit right in the beginning, but ultimately that little tilt well, can get the person very far away off the, the, the main road. The beginning of the downfall is just a, a, a little move. It's just moving away, just like a hair, a hair breath. Just a tiny little bit. That leads, draws the person down further. To the point that the person becomes sunk in self-pleasures and lusts. And the beginning is self-pleasures that are permissible. Go indulge in, in food, go indulge in all kinds of permissible things that, it, that you're allowed to be indulged according to the Torah. But that, when a person gets involved in this and, and, and forgets about spirituality and forgets about giving up and subjugating himself, so then what, is, what does it do? It drags him down even further. It drags the person down even further. Which is self-indulging in things that are not permissible. And there too, there are different levels. 
Shabbatchilo later in the beginning, it drags him down. But he's doing he's doing only things because he has a desire, he has a lust, he just wants to fulfill his, his pleasures. But this makes the person so coarse to the point that it will get him to despise God and to despise good goodness and doing good and being kind. And he starts doing not even for pleasure. It just just to despite, just to go against. That is also the slippery slope. To the point that it becomes a rebel, rebelling against Hashem, God forbid. And he does this to spite. And here says the Rebbe something very interesting. He says, because this happens by the individual, because this is something that there is in an individual, which is a human being, is a miniature world. Therefore, this concept is also in the world at large. The idea of the descent of the godliness into this world to go to the lowest level is as a result of what is happening to the individual. Being that the whole world Hashem gave in the heart of, of humans. So this concept exists also in the whole order of the chain like descent, the whole global, the, the whole system, the global system, the way of the, the worlds. That are that exist. Shanoi Safal Oilam is the Gedusha. Yeshno Yerida Gam La Oilam is the Laumaze. That in addition to the world, the holy worlds, the worlds of holiness where godliness is revealed, there is also the descent to the worlds of the opposition. And there too, there are different levels. Obazegufa Yesh Kama Vekama Dargis. Tchila Klipa Snaiga. In the beginning, it goes down to the level of. It is an opposition of godliness, but it's not really a position of godliness. Klipasniga is called a shell. Anything that is can potentially be good and, and, and can become not good. Kosher food, for example, comes from this potential neutral shell. Why? You can eat it for the sake of Hashem, or you can eat it for the sake of self-pleasures, which this really draws it down into the lowest levels. And then that leads also, again, the slippery slope that leads also to come to the, the, the total impure shells. Then it leads to the three total impure shells. A shell is something that conceals godliness. And there too, there are many different levels. Ultimately, it leads to the klipa, that opposition, that concealment of godliness, to the point that the person can say, this is my river and I made myself. This is rebelling against the king of, un, of all kings. And now, says the Rebbe, we need to understand why is there so much emphasis, so, many, so much details when dealing with the lowest of the lowest. Why do we need to know all this? Why do we need to talk about all of this? What is the reason that by explaining this concept of how godliness goes down to the lowest, we find the explanation in length and in many details? Because 
to the point that we find in the book of, called Eitz Chaim, a Kabbalistic book. Close to the end, it says there is two Sha'arim, two whole chapters that describe and explain all of the details of the levels of the lowest levels of the impure levels. To the lowest level, which is called Klippus, the shell that conceals godliness. And that there too, to the lowest of the Klippus. Not only there, says the Rebbe, we find it even in the book of the Zohar itself. In a number of places, we find that it goes and explains in details all of this. Why? Says the Rebbe Vagam, Lifnei Zer, Bezoya, Matsinu, Bekama Makoimis, Ubifrade Parshas Pude, we find in the Zer a number of places, especially in the portion of Pekude, Arichus Gedoila, Ubekama Protim, Uproti Protim, Oidoisa, Ein Tachlis, Sheba Mata Mata. We find in length and in many details about the endless the, the uh, descent of the godliness into the lowest levels. In things and, and, and worlds and, and levels that are totally opposite to uh, holiness. Says the Rebbe, what's the explanation? Why is there so much emphasis and explanations about this? Says the Rebbe, Vine, Lechoirev Shalom Abir Baze. The Rebbe is going to explain number one, we can say that we know that everything in the world exists from the Torah. So if Hashem needs this, a position of godliness to, to exist for whatever reason Hashem chooses to, for this to be. So it needs to be in the Torah. It needs to be there. We have to talk about it. As the Rebbe will explain, in the Rebbe was at the cave and she stuckled by Reiser Boa being that the way the system works, the way God created the world is by looking into the Torah and from the Torah he created the world. Lachain therefore, in order for the existence and the creation and the existence of all the, those different levels of the opposition, of the impure levels, in order for them to exist, the way God desired. Why? Because of very hidden reason that only Hashem knows why he needs them. It says in the world that God created the whole entire world. It says, Kol Everything when Hashem created was in, for his honor. For his honor. And it says, A single thing that Hashem did not create in vain. Imagine the billions and trillions and trillions of things that exist in the world, nothing is in vain. So even those things that are position of godliness, for the hidden reason that we don't understand, <coughs> Hashem wants them to be there. So therefore, he needs first to see it in the Torah, to look in the Torah. Shekol in yonim and all of these matter, all of these details of those things, the opposition, they need to be with all of the details first in the Torah. The Kabbalah, the Hasidus, in the part of the Torah, there is Kabbalah, or in the Hasidus, but it needs to be there. Amnam, however, says the Rabbi, in Gufa. What is ultimately, I mean, we don't understand all the details why, we need all of these things. As the Rebbe said, this is metama komus, a, a hidden reason what Hashem has. However, in general, generally speaking, that itself, that the existing, that the Kalippus exists, is part of the fulfillment of God's, the purpose of God's creation. As we said before. Says the Rebbe, Omam Inyan Zegufa, 
איסאבוס מציבוס הקליפוס, על ידי זה שקודשא בריחו יסתכל ברייסא, הוא בכדי שתושלם הכוונה, שתושלם תכלס הכוונה. That itself, the existence of the clippers, of the position of godliness, by way of looking in the Torah and bringing it to existence, this is as a purpose. What is the purpose? For the fulfillment of the ultimate intent of why God created the world. Kemai Marazal, as our sages say, Kol Mashak Boro HaKodesh Boruch Hu Boi Lomer Lei Boroi Ela Lechvoi Whatever God created in this world, He did not create it except for His honor. Everything is for the honor of Hashem. So you ask, how could a, a position of godliness, how could evil be in the world and, and say, this is for the honor of Hashem? Says the Rebbe, like the teachings of the Baal Shem Tov. The Baal Shem Tov has a very interesting teaching. There is a posok that says, Su meira vaasei tov. Remove from the evil, go away from the evil, and do good. What is it? It's a verse in Tehillim. What is the simple understanding? Very simple. Go away from evil and do good. The Baal Shem Tov says different. The Baal Shem Tov says, Su meira. Go away from the evil. That's step number one. Step number two, he says, Asei Tov, turn the evil into good. Make it good. Asei Tov, make it good. That means that it's not enough just to go away from the evil, from the power of the evil, the forces of the evil. You have to use those forces of the evil and turn them around that they become forces of good. That's what the Rebbe says. That he has to do from bad good, from the evil good. Which means the first part of the verse that says remove yourself from the evil, that is only the first stage. That is only the beginning of the work. But the completion of this work is not only to remove yourself from the evil, but also turn the evil into good. This is the idea, what it says, you have to turn the darkness into light and the bitterness into sweetness. Just like in the language of the halacha, it says, when a person does the proper teshuva, when a person repents, when a person repents very deeply, it can get to the point that his past sins will be considered like merits, will be considered like virtues. Because it's such a deep repentance that he gets the person to a point that he could not have gotten there unless he felt so bad because of the sins. So therefore, the past sins, they were the engine that drove him to this point of teshuva. And therefore, even the sins become parts of the engine of Teshuv, and they become like merits. To the point that it says in the Torah, there's a story, there's a story of a person, the Gemara says in Menachas, there was a person that, it was a sinner, and he was ready to pay a lot of money, says 400 zoos, to be with, with a harlot. And, but one thing this guy had, he had one mitzvah that he kept. What was the mitzvah? He kept the mitzvah of tzitzis. And he came there, and she spread very expensive bed sheets and all prepared something very expensive. But then he sat down, and all of a sudden the tzitzis Blue on his face. 
And that reminded him, the tzitzis reminded him that there's Hashem, is, Hashem is there. It says in the portion of tzitzis that Hashem, Ani Hashem Elokeichem, I'm your God, I'm the one who gives the punishment and I'm the one who gives you the reward. And he realized what, what a terrible mistake he's doing. And he backed off and she got very offended. And she told her what, what, what happened. I'm not, I'm not good enough. And she said, and he said to her what I just said. That the tzitzis reminded him from Hashem. And that uh, impressed her so much that she decided to convert. And she became Jewish. And the Gemara says that Later on, she, he married her. And those same batchets, expensive things that was she prepared for him in a forbidden way, ultimately she prepared for him in a permissible way. So that is an example of turning the bad into good. Says the Rebbe, this is an eternal lesson to each and every single Jew. Every single Jew has the ability, has the power to turn the bad into good. If you have an ad, if you have a, a, a talent, if you have things that you did that the person did in, in a wrong way, you can use those same talents. Whatever industry you are, whatever background you have, whatever neighborhood you come from, you're able to take everything from the past and to look for a way how it can be used in a good, positive way. As the Alter Rebbe brings in the holy book, the Tanya Kadisha, that we need to make a home for Hashem in this low world. To make a home in a place where there is no lower than this place. This includes that that low level, as we mentioned before, that the ultimate low, that too, there too, we need to build a home for Hashem. How do you make the home for Hashem over there? You take that place and you turn it around to good. Okay, so here the Rebbe concluded that's what we need to do. However, the Rebbe is asking now a question. We know this is not an easy thing to do. To be tested, to come to low places is a very dangerous area to enter. And indeed, we ask every single morning, we ask Hashem, do not bring us into a test. Don't get us into such a situation that we have to fight and we have to have challenges and fight the evil because it's not easy. And there is no guarantees that you can win. It's very difficult. So how can we expect from a Jew that he should face those low levels and to be able to come out? Says the Rabbi, even Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid of this. Let's see inside. Says the Rabbi, but at first glance, this is something which is not understood. And we're asking Hashem, we're begging Hashem, do not bring us into a test. And we know that Hashem fulfills the request. We're asking Hashem, and Hashem fulfills that. He avoids, He lets us, gives us the strength, and He helps us that we shouldn't have the test, because if we would have those tests, the big test, it wouldn't be easy. It would be much more difficult than what we have. Vain came. 
question then is, איך אפשר לדרש מכל אחד ואחד מישראל להסעסי גם בבירו מטה מטה עדין תכל? So how can we expect and demand to say to a Jew that every single one of us needs to deal with these lowest levels? That's not understood. We know it's, that's not uh, something that we're, lo- we're looking forward. Yes, if a person failed, and if a person fell into the lowest places, of course, we tell them that there is, there is no such thing as, as, as hopeless, there's always hope. Hashem helps, you have to turn things around. But to say to a Jew, listen, you have to now go down, God forbid, of course. We, that's, not what we, that's not what we want. That's not what we're asking. So how is it something that is a request expected from every person, especially as we mentioned before, we are the generation that we need to bring down godliness to the lowest levels. And the question is, what does it mean? Are we expected to go down to the lowest levels? This is a dangerous place to enter. Especially based and what it says in the Zaya, the Zaya talks about the verse we learned last week, Bo el Pare, Hashem says to Moshe, Bo el Pare, come to Pare. Omer Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon says, Maxiv Bo el Pare, why does it say, come to Pare? Leich el Pare, my brother, should say, go to Pharaoh. My boy, what does it mean, Hashem says, come? So the Zoya says, But what happened is that Hashem brought Moshe Rabbeinu deep inside the level of Pharaoh. Rooms within rooms, rooms that lead to deeper rooms, inner rooms, in the levels of those who are opposing God. And Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid and he didn't get close. And then what happened? Says the Zoya Kim the Chomer Kutcher Brichu the Dochet Moshe. When Hashem saw that Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid, Oma Kutcher Brichu, then Hashem said to Moshe, Don't worry. Hineni Olecho Paroi Melech Mitzrayim. I am upon you, Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. Atani Magod Leroy Vesech Yerov, the big giant, the uh, Tanim, the whale or the fish or the snake. Anyway, whatever it means, the Tanim that dwells in its rivers. Vekuchod Brichu Itzrich Leagacha Beikrov Veloyachare. And God sort of admitted to Moshe and he says, Yes, Hashem needs to fight this war, not somebody else. So what do we find? What do we see here? Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid to go to Pharaoh. He was afraid to enter these lowest levels that has such, so much power that can drag a person down. And Hashem agreed with him. He told him, yes, you're right, and that is why I am going to fight it. So Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid to go into, to deal with the lowest levels, the lowest of the lowest, even after Hashem gave him the commandment, come to Pharaoh. When we say come to Pharaoh, Hashem says, come, I'm coming with you. Still Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid. And Hashem agreed with him, and he came by himself. As it says, I am, as he said, I am coming upon you, Pari. Hashem says, I am coming. Okay, so Moshe Rabbein is afraid to deal with this. And yet in the Kabbalah we say, we talk about all of the details of the lowest levels, and we are told, hey guys, listen, this is your job, you got to do it. You got to fix it. Moshe Rabbeinu was afraid, and we are, we are expected not to be afraid, to go down to the lo- lowest levels and to without 
to the lowest level without being afraid and being successful. So we're finishing here with the question. God willing, tomorrow we're going to go to the answer. Just that you, said that you don't go to sleep uh, with a question because I know you're not going to fall asleep with this question. It's going to bother you all night. So the, in short, the answer the Rebbe talks about, it's not, we don't necessarily need to go down physically, but when we study the Torah about those low levels, that itself has the ability to change and transform the evil, and that will explain tomorrow, Bezat Hashem. Have a wonderful day.